What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ledger Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian. So Tracy calls it the Crimps Hemsworth Apology Tour. Brian, what do you think of this admission to not taking this movie as seriously as he should have, Brian? Brian, I've said this some time ago. Hemsworth was feeling himself when he thought he was a comedian and he took it, this character, to a place that we weren't expecting for him to, for it, for that character to go. And it just really left a bad taste in every, not everyone, but most people's mouths. And he's now getting a whiff of that. The delayed reaction, Brian. I guess he went to the the bodega and somebody says something, you know. Oh no, I don't think it's that. I think it's because he has yeah. a movie to promote, which is Furiosa. He's the co-star of the new. Ah, I don't yeah, think yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah, it's yeah, that yeah. he just realized it. I think that this is his most public forum since Love and Thunder, to where he can really. Discuss. But why wait so long to to really acknowledge? So the reason I think you wait is honestly, in this day and age, you know, the movie goes to theaters then it goes to rental, then it goes to streaming, right? So they probably would be like, don't get in the way of that process with these type of comments. Wait till it's fully through, the pig is fully through the Python, then talk about it. And all the juice Correct. is Correct. I don't think that's an accident. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm guessing this is something that like, between him, his agent, Marvel, Disney, they're like, it's fine that you feel this way and it's fine you wanna say it, here's the statute of limitations and then once you're outside that and this is the first pro high profile project since he's been cleared to talk about it what do you think he's felt since hearing the, the re watch listening to reviews uh not listening well, but reading the reviews getting the reviews hearing the criticisms of this movie and having to hold on to that for that so long well i kind of have a positive spin on this I actually think okay. what he did is sort of rare. I don't usually think that stars in this role are that frank about a project not working because of what they did. Usually stars are very quick to throw others under the bus. Zack Snyder, go ahead. <laughs> when things don't work. This actually, in my mind, has been a fascinating set of interviews. because it act And it actually has raised my hopes for Thor 5. Because what he's saying doesn't feel totally canned by someone just saying, here, go out and say this. Go out and read the cards. This yeah, does yeah, yeah. This feel is something like that has thought about it. he actually is able to be self-aware. Yes. Because yeah, let, me, yeah. let me read you this quote. Because I think I got caught up in the improv and the wackiness. And I became a parody of myself. And I didn't stick the landing. I love the quote. Do you see a reference yeah. to his director in there? Do you see a reference to his co-stars in there? Do you see a reference to Kevin? F no, he's taking it. He's taking, he's the, taking the, the hit the, the for full everybody. responsibility. I I give him points for that. And honestly, he could he couldn't have said it better. This is what exactly what we said and what we feared from the moment the first trailer hit. Yeah. So I actually give him credit for recognizing it, owning up to it, and then saying, "I owe everyone something better." But when he was doing it, Brian, because uh, I was having a conversation with Freddie and Tracy, he read the script. But I also interjected and say that this was more improv than than than, than a script. They, your thoughts? Yeah, no. See, I I actually think that both can be true. Like you're like, how did he not re recognize it? Hang on a minute, Ragnarok was a massive hit, a massive hit, mm -hmm. and it was critically acclaimed and almost unilaterally lauded. This show is probably lower on that movie than most places you'll find. But don't let that twist reality. They had every reason to look at what worked in Ragnarok and say, we need that. We need that again. And so all the rumors you heard about Love and Thunder leading up to it was that it was basically, they gave Taika the keys and they said, be full Taika. Yeah. And Hemsworth is kind of saying, we very purposefully leaned into the silly. That's a choice. We all chose to do that. I could have told you that was a bad idea, but artistically, 
I don't, I also can't blame them for sitting in the room and saying, you know what? This is what sold us all the tickets. That's the bet they were making. You know, and the movie wasn't a disaster commercially, right? It just didn't make as much as the last one, but it, it was 750, right? It's not a terrible number. So you can't like look at it and be like, this wasn't the Marvels. This wasn't, you know, Aquaman 2. Like this movie just wasn't as good as the last one and everyone knew it. So I actually think in the moment, you're right. It wasn't so much that the script was structured. It's that they were coming together and saying, we're going to take the goofy, the improv, the silly of Ragnarok, and we're going to crank that very consciously. And when it didn't work, he's man enough to just look back and say, you blew it. You blew it. But I, that's what I mean. I actually think that sets the stage maybe i think that gives me more hope for thor 5 because that shows me awareness that shows me what he will be yeah. conscious of when he does get in front of the camera the next time because he has proven and this goes to the other comments he's making which in some ways i think are more interesting that he has range it's not that he's not funny it's that he yeah. got too overboard with it it's not that he can't be dramatic it's just that he wasn't quite right as a shakespearean thor either right so you the talent is there like the, the raw material for something great, I really believe is there. And yeah, it, it just hasn't quite, in my mind, Ragnarok, most people say is the closest, it hasn't quite 100% been legendary yet. But he's probably tried more different things than most of the other Avengers have in their roles. Like how much, like as great as RDJ is, how much did RDJ really evolve as Tony Stark in how he played the character over the 12 years versus how this guy has tried to play it. Yeah, yeah. Whatever happened to the Hulk Hogan movie? I haven't heard anything about that since he, I don't know, because he, he just, he's doing this Mad Max movie. He obviously had the health thing and he kind of did that sort of bi, bi, autobiographical kind of reality show. Um, we haven't heard any updates on, on the Hulk Hogan biopic. Um, so that's kind of been an, an interesting whatever happened to that. Um, but did you see his other quotes that he threw out about the Avengers? That Downey had to come out and basically sh take sides against whoa, whoa. him? What did he say? So Variety, he's again, same publicity tour for, for uh, Furiosa. Mm -hmm. He goes, quote, speaking about Thor within the Avengers, sometimes I felt like a security guard for the team. I would read everyone else's lines and go, oh, they got way cooler stuff. They're having more fun. What's my character doing? It was always about, you got the wig, you've got the muscles, you've got the costume, where's the lighting? Yeah, I'm part of this big thing, but I'm pretty replaceable, end quote. Dude, that's a that's just shots fired at his role within the team to the point where- I now, didn't, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking about it now because I, 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 never, I haven't read the, 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 those quotes, but interesting. I actually thought that was more yeah, like that shocking. Way. Like that came out of left field that he was miffed about how his character was written by Joss Whedon and then Marcus and McFeely within the context of the Avengers. And I thought that's especially weird considering I thought in Infinity War and whatever you thought of Fat Thor in Endgame, he had a lot to do. I thought he was written well in those in, in those Avengers. Ultron, movies. I think he's it's a reach. That whole like where he goes off and jumps in the pool and has the vision. I think oh. that's but that movie's the weakest Avengers movie. Like I don't I don't you know he's not alone in that. Yeah. So RDJ wasn't one gonna let that one pass. So he actually responded through variety to say, quote, first off, Thor as a character is super tricky to adapt with lots of implied limitations. But he, meaning Hemsworth, and Ken Branagh figured out how to transcend and make him somehow relatable, but God godlike. Hemsworth, in my opinion, has the most complex psyche out of all of us Avengers. He's got the wit, the gravitas, the restraint, the fire, and the gentleness. Which is kind of his way of saying, you did a great job, but you had a lot more to yeah. work with than you're saying you did. So pipe down. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Stand yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Put the hammer down. You want me to put the hammer down? Yeah. I, that. I, I, that. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what I think, Brian. I'm thinking about the psychology here. I think he is a bit, perhaps he's thinking too deeply into it because of the, all the criticism of Thor, Love and Thunder. 
that he's probably thinking too deeply and, and just looking back at his experience and thinking that way when it really wasn't that way. I think Robert Downey Jr.'s perspective is right on, right on. Uh, outside of Thor Love and Thunder, I think Thor Ragnarok, outside of the Hulk, was, 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 was well done. Uh, outside of the goofiness, but um, I think he's just in his head. I think his, uh, it, the criticism, Brian, of Thor Love and Thunder, because prior to Thor Love and Thunder, Brian, there was a lot of expectation that this movie was going to be the best Thor movie that we were going to see. And that joint wasn't. It wasn't even close. We did a show talking, making the case for how they could make it the best Marvel movie to date. Even though we had our doubts, we kind of made the case for like how you could yeah. you hit these marks and you could have a mega hit. And it just wasn't that. It is interesting, though, because like on the one hand, like I said, I just gave him credit for being incredibly self-aware about his own performance in Love and Thunder. But this comment seems kind of like, I, I, don't, I don't agree. Like, I don't see it. Like... Like, I don't see what you see in terms of how Thor was marginalized, especially as the Avengers movies evolved. Like I said, Ultron, yeah, but Ultron's not a great movie. I also don't know in the very first Avengers movie. How, what more, more, more I was just going to say, I don't know how you can make the case that he should, like, what more should he have gotten? <laughs> Whose lines should he have? Because he's saying other people had better lines. So he's basically saying, what lines should he have gotten? He's not getting Iron Man's lines. And he's not getting Loki's lines because Loki's the bad guy. And Cap is probably going to be higher on the, in, in sort of the pecking order of bringing the team together than he would be. So I just, I'm, that's why I'm kind of just like at a loss as to what he there is thinking he wanted, other than this goes into the third thing he said, which is not necessarily Avengers specific, but it may go to your point about self reflection. He also goes through this whole sort of like disappointment at the parts that he's been offered coming off of his work with Marvel. Like he indicates a real expectation that he thought he would get more serious work opportunities. He's at, he's apparently auditioned or asked for opportunities with better directors and they haven't come his way. He's kind of expressing frustration with wh where the career has gone, which I think is also interesting because he, I mean, he's not a mega box office star, but he's a pretty darn big global star. Certainly. But it's movies like Ghostbusters. It's movies like Men, Men in Black. Black. Yeah, exactly. But, that so he's implying he's taking those because he can't get the parts he's basically like we're talking about where's the hulk hogan biopic which sounds like it could be awards fair he's sort of saying he's not getting more of those and so he has to take the franchise paychecks because that's what's being offered and i get those franchise paychecks but you also have the ability to try to make those movies you got to try to be arnold right you got to try to make those movies in your performances and, and 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 try to make these movies good and not just take the paycheck. Well, and I also feel like he he did extraction. So he did something very successful that was totally I different was than dope. the Avengers. He also has worked with some really good directors. It's just he hasn't gotten the really good director in the really good movie. So like people won't remember, he was the lead in a Michael Mann movie, Black Hat. It just was a bomb. But Michael Mann is one of the best living filmmakers there is. He's now the co-lead in a George Miller Mad Max movie. I don't know how good that's going to be because it comes out in a few weeks. But George Miller is generally regarded as one of the most gifted filmmakers of the last 50 years. Like, So he is getting some... And there's, there was a long-standing rumor he was going to work with Spielberg on something. So this feels weirdly like a midlife crisis about not a whole lot. And quite honestly, you know, we, we thought it might be Gareth Edwards, but the director's chair is open for Thor 5. Like, if he, doesn't, why can't, why can't they get a serious big time director with him now on this sort of repentance tour to harness a great performance out of him in Thor 5 and have that conversation with Loki sitting in the chair? Like, I, I don't, I, it was, it, the whole thing has been really interesting to me. This whole sequence of conversations and quotes. Is it his, what do you, what, why do you think he's not getting these roles? Because of how he looks. I wanted to say that, I, but I, 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 what about his look? He's six foot five with golden hair and blue eyes, and he's chiseled out of stone. If you want to be like the down on your luck, dramatic guy, people Amen. aren't buying. People aren't <laughs> buying that dude as having those kind of life problems. They're not. Yeah. Like, <sighs> it's like if we talk about who could pull off He Man, 
Who could pull off Conan? Amen. Who could pull off Hulk Hogan? Right? You're talking about larger than life, real and fantastical characters. That's what he looks like, which is why that's why he will get called for roles like that. It's not that he's not talented enough. It, I will say, like, Black Hat's a very flawed movie. I actually went back and rewatched it the other day just to see. It's like the idea that he's like this hardcore, deep hacker looking like the way he looks. It's a tough sell, man. It is certain roles he's just not going to get asked to do. I can see that. I mean, but he could have gotten like the fall guy. I don't know. Gosling's really good in that movie. I mean, there's something about that. There's yeah. something about that wry Canadian humor that he has that really works for that. And he has a lot of chemistry with yeah. Emily Blunt, which makes the movie enjoyable. Again, not a classic, but it is enjoyable. Yeah. But to me, I think he should be looking more at what he did in Extraction. Because to me, that's where there's work to be done. But like, how does he then try to avoid being a typecast and just doing the same movies over and over? All I'm saying is that's a role that was more serious. It was darker mentally and physically. But it's a role that he was very believable in because of how physically imposing he is. I'm not saying remake Predator. But I always think of that as like the template. Like if you want to look at how to engineer a career, look at how Arnold did it and who he worked with and how he expanded his palette as an actor to become the star that he became. Arnold understood what roles he could play and only when he became the megastar did he then subvert his own persona to do things like Twins or Kindergarten Cop and have those be mega hits. He didn't do those first because no one would buy him as that. Like... They remade Total Recall, and they shouldn't have done that. And it's a bad movie with Colin Farrell. Chris Hemsworth would have been a more interesting remake of Total Recall. Certainly. You're right. Him being six foot five, you know, it's like, how many movies can you put him in? How how tall is Dolph Lundgren? About the same, six three, six four. He's He's a big guy, too. Yeah. He was also helped by, Stallone is like five foot four. So that also helped, five foot five. That also helped. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But I saw him. I saw him in some uh, some movies that that like that weren't good at all. But Dolph, yeah, well, Dolph did like the the straight to video action series, right? That that's where he lived for a long time. And Hemsworth was a better actor than that. Um, London was really you know thoughtful guy, but I mean Hemsworth was a more talented actor. So yeah, He Man is a very interesting one. But again, he's going to view that as like beneath him, right? That's what he's kind of saying. I, I'm interested to see because he he sort of seems to play a quasi villain in this Mad Max movie. That's the other route that he could take. Is like, could he lean? Could he lean yeah. bad? Could he break bad and use the looks? You know, like he obviously was not a candidate for like a Lex Luthor, but like, he, could he lean into a role like that where there's real dramatic range, but you need the physicality to actually you know, sell part of the role. I don't know what that is, but. Very interesting, man. Is it, there's no real, there's, there's a very interesting conversation regarding Chris Hemsworth's uh, career and the potential of him perhaps wanting to be something more than what he already is. I mean, he's a superstar, but he's not known for doing, I would say, great movies, Brian, or having. Yeah, I agree. His his he wants yeah, he clearly so. wants to be nominated for awards. That's what he's kind of saying. He wants to be nominated for Oscars, and he's not getting those looks. And he feels like he's good enough to do those parts. But and he may be, but he needs the right part for that. So what I would say is, listen, your career's not in that bad of shape, man. You got royalty checks coming from Marvel for the rest of your life. You, you can take <laughs> risks. So take risks. But what kind of risk would you? you uh, then ask I would say, like, if you really want to do that, do smaller pictures and really try to make people buy into you as something other than what you've been. But you know, like hold out for that. Like what though? Yeah, like why? That's what I'm saying. He's saying I need to take the Men in Black check, and I'm saying, really, you got enough money, right? Like, come on, like, like you should be able to pe- to pass on those projects and take a swing at, you know, something else that you think is more serious, even if it goes straight to straight. I, I, I see, I, I see the difficulty, Brian. I, I just, I see. Well, I think like, here, I'll make a comparison before we close. He's probably jealous uh-huh. of Glenn Powell. Glenn Powell. Glenn Powell, right. Gets to, gets to be hangman and top gun maverick. 
And now this summer, he's headlining Hitman, directed by Richard Linklater, and he's headlining the Twisters semi-sequel directed by Lee Isaac Chung. Hemsworth's probably looking at that being like, well, that's another somewhat tall, blonde guy who's getting to work with these top directors. And, he, you know, he didn't do Thor. Like, how come I don't get that? that? That That's the kind of guy I think he's looking at as being like, why am I not getting that call? This is, wow, wow. Here, okay, here's uh, my last sliding doors moment. And I got to bring this back to Thor because this came out recently and I never heard this and I have no idea how much this is true. Alan Richson claims he was a leading candidate to be Thor and didn't ta- okay. and tanked his audition, didn't take it seriously and didn't get the part, which went to Chris Hemsworth. If Alan Richson is Thor and Chris Hemsworth is Jack Reacher, what is the world like right now? Are we better off the same or are we worse off? No. Be worse. I tend to agree, but I just wanted to bring this up because of that sliding doors moment. Because Chris Hemsworth obviously could play a six-five blonde bi. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree, but it's an interesting one. When I heard that, I was like, it blew my mind. I was like, really? We could have had a world where Alan Richson was Thor all this time, and maybe Chris Hemsworth. I don't think he could have pulled it off. I think Hemsworth is better as Thor than Richson would have been. So, I agree. Absolutely. He he fits that he just fits the the mold of Thor. Adam Richson fits more the mold of Batman. <laughs> I wouldn't even say it, Brian. You shouldn't have said nothing. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyway, the very interesting Chris Crim, Chris Hemsworth looking for that. Bad fear of, of, of award buzz, that nomin hearing his name being called out. Cause he's he's at these award shows handing out um awards and the nominees are and he's looking at those names and like what was the communist? No those names on you oh my god. <laughs> well hopefully hopefully he's not going to like take take some director or producer's head in his Bro. <laughs> and squeeze him <laughs> for a role. Am I getting it? Am I getting it? But listen, I get it. I get it. I get it. Uh, it's hard to see Chris Hemsworth be down and out uh, and, and struggle. I, right? It's like. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd sign up for that kind of struggling, but okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Do a, uh, yeah, what, it'll be. Let's let's see where. Let's see. Let's see. This is going to be interesting because I'm still. I've been waiting for this this Hulk Hogan movie. So um, let's see. Um, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. Uh, hit that like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the Energy Report. That's why he cuts. Time. The show goes on! Yeah.